Hey everyone, welcome back with another training course with how to calculate measurement uncertainty but for microbiological analysis. Before that, I have done complete training course for method validation, verification and uncertainty calculation but for chemical analysis. Now, I will do this training course only for microbiology and I will make comparison between many points in chemistry and microbiology lab relating to uncertainty calculation. In this training course, I use different guidelines, but the most common guideline used in this training course is ISO 19036-2019. Microbiology of the food chain estimation of measurement uncertainty for quantitative determination uncertainty associated with microbiological analysis. Whether for microbiology or chemistry or any other type of analysis, ISO IEC 17025 2017 edition requires the lab to estimate measurement uncertainty for analysis and also for sampling for the whole measurement process. Measurement uncertainty certainty is a value. This value will be added to the final result for each sample after that to compensate all effects or all sources of errors coming from every step of the measurement process from sampling up to giving the result. This value will be added to the final result to give you at the end the real concentration or amount or number of microorganisms. So measurement uncertainty compensate all effects coming from every step of the measurement. All of these effects will be calculated, will be calculated and give you value. This value will be is the measurement uncertainty. That will be added to the final result to give you the real concentration or amount or the real number of microorganisms. So you can understand from that by addition of measurement uncertainty value to the final result, you compensated all factors affecting the accuracy of the results. So you will get a reliable or more reliable result and that will provide more confidence to you about the result. And you should know also that too large or too small measurement uncertainty value may affect the reliability of the decision. That's why you should learn how to calculate measurement uncertainty for any type of analysis in a very easy and simplified way. And to know well what are the sources that may affect the measurement process and calculate uncertainty for each source and that will be provided in this training course. So let's start with this training course. Introduction. For every measurement, even the most careful one, there is a margin of doubt. Margin of doubt. This margin of doubt called uncertainty of the measurement. So uncertainty or measurement uncertainty is how much you have a doubt with your analytical measurement. How much you have a doubt with your analytical measurement. This margin of doubt has to be, shall be quantified at a high confidence level to give you a reliable result. So two numbers are required to calculate or to quantify this margin of doubt or measurement uncertainty. The width of this margin, how much this margin from the where up to where the width of this margin and confidence level. How much you are confident that the true value lies in between this range after addition of measurement uncertainty. And in microbiological lab, we can identify many causes of variability due to biological, instrumental and personal bias that may affect the accuracy of results. So these sources of variability 
should be calculated to give this value of measurement uncertainty, such as the ability of an isle to give typical reaction on a diagnostic medium. So microorganism will give a typical reaction such as the required or target microorganism, and that will affect on the accuracy of the measurement process. And the use of incorrect ingredients in a culture media. If you use incorrect ingredients in the media, you will not be able to isolate the required bacteria, the target bacteria. So the use of incorrect ingredients ingredients in a cultural media using the wrong components of substances when preparing the growth medium for microorganisms so you will not be able to isolate required bacteria accurately or differentiate microorganisms and also from sources of errors the consequences of changing brands of commercial media you can have you can prepare the media inside the lab and also you can have commercial medium but if you change from brand to another brand, you should ensure the performance of the other one to control this media. So the results that can occur when switching from one brand to another brand may be affected. So you should control that, the performance of this media and ensure that result will not be affected. But this also can be source of uncertainty, so it should be measured. And you should always use standard conditions for the whole measurement process. Use of non-standard conditions in the preparation, sterilization, and use of a culture media. Using conditions that are not standard or recommended when preparing, sterilizing, or using a culture media that also may affect the accuracy of the results. And equipment and human errors when weighing the samples, dispensing, when the whole during the whole measurement process there there may be some errors from the equipment and from human that will cause variability in the results and also the tolerance applied to the shelf life of test reagents the expiry time for the test reagents refers to the acceptance range of time for the test reagent to be stored without losing its effectiveness and also very important point the relative skill levels of different technicians the competency of personnel inside the lab also that may affect the measurement results so it should be included when you calculate uncertainty for measurement and even the well-being of any technician undertaking the analysis all of these factors can be a source of uncertainty can affect the accuracy of the measurement result so all of them should be included when you measure when you calculate the uncertainty for the measurement for the analysis and that can be done through reproducibility repeating the analysis different times by different analysts in long time scale these these were a few examples of biological, instrumental, and personal bias that affect, that can affect the accuracy, precision, and certainty of microbiological tests. That was the end of our lecture for today. See you in the next lecture.